look at what you are, what God has said. Because, see, someone is always not going to like you for some reason. So you have to look at what God says you are and not what people say you are. Because people don't see the whole picture. God sees the whole picture. And remember, you cannot always control circumstances, but you can always control your own thoughts. And especially when you submit them to God, nothing changes until your mind changes. We need to change our mind. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and to know that God is a companion in trials. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2 says, But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Brothers and sisters, God's got your back, your front, both sides, the top, the bottom, the outer, the inner. God has all of you. And when we understand that, you will know, but you have to have that transformative thinking because as a man thinks in his heart so is he if you think nothing in your heart about you and you think you're nothing you will be nothing but if you know in your heart who you are and who God has said you are you will be who God pronounces you to be do you know the most difficult project in the world is the reconstruction of the human mind. Brothers and sisters, you have to stop with the negative thinking and stop listening to what people say you are and go to God and allow him to tell you who you are, who he made. See, God, do not make junk. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a masterpiece because you are a piece of the master. So remember, there's a way out of your mess, and it's J-E-S-U-S. Good morning, and welcome to AM 1380 WYSH. And Ask Your Neighbor. Ask Your Neighbor can also be heard and seen on our website, wyshradio.com. And if you are in Anderson, Rome, or Morgan County and have Comcast Cable, you can watch Ask Your Neighbor on BBB TV Channel 12. Ask Your Neighbor is the program where you call in and do just that. Ask Your Neighbor. Do you have a comment? Do you have a problem? Or do you have a question? Then call in and ask your neighbor. 865-457-1380 or toll free at 877-711-4005 and for those of you that might be listening or watching on the internet you can email from our website wyshradio.com just click on the contact us button and email your questions now sit back and listen as listeners throughout east tennessee and the entire world answer your questions on ask your neighbor on bbb tv 12 and am 1380 wysh as usual, we've started the show without y'all. <laughs> we, we always, uh, the stories begin once <laughs> once That's the seats right. are taken. But, hey, the R's in the seat. Yeah. <laughs> Butts in the seat and the mouth's wide open. That's exactly right. <laughs> David West stars the stories of the Cas Walker Show. Good morning, everybody. And this morning... Uh, we got Bill Williams in with us. Morning, Mr. Bill. How are you? Oh, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. It's good to have you back. We were talking before you went on. Three years next month. Hard no, to believe. 
Well, the, yeah, the yeah. next month, yeah. Yeah, it seems like it was the day before yesterday. It does seem like it, doesn't it? It doesn't seem like it's that long at all, but three years go by. Man, time's flying. It does. It does. What have you, what have you been doing without me? I've just been sitting here talking, <laughs> running my mouth. <laughs> Probably hanging Entertaining on. the folks. That's I guess that's what I've been doing. How about you? What have you been doing the last three I've been years? I've staying busy. Good. I'm, I'm retired, but I stay, I stay pretty busy. That's good. Yeah. Good, good, good. We were talking earlier uh about <laughs> before we went on and i think uh david does this david always comes in right at the last minute right before the show starts he's, i mean just he's not he's never late but you always wonder and you you were talking about uh was it bob kessling that was like that on the air bob kessling very much like that i mean he'd wait till the last second <laughs> <laughs> not the last minute the last second to come and sit down uh, good evening everyone Here, here's the sports you know. <laughs> and everybody be worried that he wasn't going to make yeah. it yeah that's great who was the worst at doing that no, he was the worst. Oh, yeah. He, 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 by, he by far was the worst. Yeah. yeah. But he but he always got there. Yeah. He's always and let me hasten to say he was one of my best friends and we have oh uh, he, he's just a great guy. He's great, uh, he's great uh on the football games too. Yeah. That was a fantastic yeah. fantastic replacement, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. The reason I said that about uh, being late, uh, Bill's, Bill's, you've never been late anywhere. He, he's so punctual. I mean, I, I told him what time to meet me, and, and he was already sitting there. I don't know how long he's been sitting there. But. Well, I worry about get being late, so I'm generally early. Actually, I've, I've been sit, I, w I was sitting there for 15 minutes before you got there. You're a godsend to radio and television. You know? <laughs> There's nothing worse than being a producer or something like that, sitting there waiting on somebody to be late, like. Mm -hmm. Call me liar on that early part. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, I've I've learned with David. I don't I don't never worry about it. I know it's, I know he's just gonna slide in. I just get everything ready and the show goes on. <laughs> so we get it going. Mr. Williams just had a birthday too. I did. Big I birthday. Did. I I had a big birthday. I was 90 years old. Uh, a week ago, last Friday. Last Friday. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank let's you. Tell yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. Let's tell about the celebration. Yeah, what'd you, you do? Friday uh, on WBR. Yeah. Good time. Yeah. Tell them some of the folks, and, and you was telling me, I, I didn't get to catch all of it, but tell them some of the folks that sent in videos and, and sang, actually sang to you. <laughs> well, uh, Dolly Parton sang happy birthday to me, and I appreciate <laughs> that so much. And Lamar Alexander and uh, Bill Hubbard, two former governors, uh, were on there. Uh, well, it had been taped, of course. Mm -hmm. or, you, you don't call it taping anymore. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> <laughs> they had pre-videoed. How's that? Yeah. That works. That's close enough. But, uh, but it's still personalized. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. they had done that. And all just a, a lot, a lot of friends. And what was really amazing to well, all those were amazing to me. But, um, yeah, I worked in Springfield, Missouri before before I came here. And well, I came here 47 years ago. But two of the, my uh, the people that I work with and are still working at the television station in Springfield, Missouri, sent sent their greetings. And I thought that was so cool. That is cool. Yeah, yeah. And you got some pretty important friends. You get Dolly and some governors wishing you happy birthday. That's some pretty exclusive company, Bill. Well, I was honored. Yeah, I was really honored. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's a that's a good tie-in for the Cass Walker show. There, throwing in Dolly like that's you, it. Here's name dropping. Fits that. right in. <laughs> but you had another celebration on Saturday night. We did at the uh, First Baptist Church uh, uh, Central Baptist in Fountain City. Yeah, my my, my daughter Amazing. Angelique Thomas. Uh, put that together and she's been working on that for a while uh and uh, it, it was just amazing she she did a wonderful wonderful job of decorating and getting ready for for the party and i i don't know there there were over 100 people there i guess 120 150 something like that but it, it, it was just an amazing night to me. It really was. Probably uh, the big surprise that you got. Did you huge, tell, tell huge folks? surprise. There I am. I'm, I'm standing there. I'm greeting people as they're coming in. I'm saying hello. I'm hugging the, the women, every woman I could find. <laughs> I was hugging. He hugged my wife twice. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm 90 years old. I can get by with it, okay? Well, I can't wait to get 90. <laughs> so I'm doing all that, and I look up. And here comes this beautiful woman, 
My daughter. Yeah. My daughter from Phoenix, Arizona, came in to be at that party. Oh. I had, had no idea she was coming. Uh, and, uh, oh, it, what a thrill. What a thrill. That's awesome. Yeah. You surprised him. Yeah. That's fantastic. We had a producer of Live at 5 at 4 or whenever it is now. But <laughs> she was, we were sort of standing there by the side, and I said, does Bill know his daughter's coming? She goes, he doesn't have a clue. I did not have that a clue. That was a great surprise. As a matter of fact, I, I, had, I had texted my daughter, which I done I do quite a bit, <laughs> Oh, she texted me that day, uh, and uh, she said, uh, "Daddy, uh, uh, happy birthday, Daddy! I wish I could be with you." You know, yeah. <laughs> Her wish came true. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'll tell you a funny thing about the that I was kidding you yesterday, but it's true. Uh, Ken Small was standing over, and he had four or five people waiting to get him to get up to talk to him. And I kidded him. I finally got over to him. I said, Ken. We had him out here, well, it's been a few months ago, mm -hmm. Ken Swall. And I said, Ken, what are you trying to do? Are you competing with Bill? Who has the biggest <laughs> line here of people wanting to talk to him? <laughs> <laughs> and Ken and his demeanor, you know how Ken is. Yeah. He said, no, he said, this is all about Bill. I, am. I said, absolutely. But. Oh, oh, Ken, bless his heart. Uh, he had gotten up. He had been in Alabama. And he got up early that morning Did. to make the trip up to Knoxville to, oh, wow. to be at that party. So, yeah, yeah he's one, definitely one of my best friends. He's a beautiful, beautiful guy. So 90, 90 years old, being 90, the experience and stuff, I mean, all of that stuff, and we talked about it, you know, three years ago before all you came from. In fact, when we was pulling, when we were sitting out waiting to go on, we was talking about trading times. Oh, yeah. He said, tell them about the, the radio station. Now, you said you hosted or helped host a show similar to Trading Times. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Actually, I was the afternoon guy. Um, and... Uh, but it, 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 little, this little AM station, I don't think I don't think FM was even. It, it certainly wasn't as prolific as it is now. But the little AM station in my hometown, mm -hmm. Butler, Missouri, and I worked the afternoon. But uh, the morning guy, sometimes if he was off, I'd, I'd come in and fill in for him. And we had a, a trading time. We, we didn't call it that, but I can't remember. Trading what post or swap and shop or. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, a trading post. I yeah. think. I, anyway, we had something. And we we did that very similar thing, but then I worked the afternoon. <laughs> See, the first hour in the afternoon was jazz because of the owner manager of the station loved jazz, so I had to play jazz. <laughs> one hour, jazz. one hour of jazz. Now I'm a musician, and I love all kinds of music, but jazz is not one of my favorites. <laughs> so I had to play jazz for an hour, mm -hmm. and then I had. Was that then I, I, I had gospel for an hour, mm -hmm. which is fine. I love gospel music. And then I had country music for two hours. <laughs> and I love that. That was great. And then I had, what do we call it? Stairway to the Stars. <laughs> oh, wow. Mood music for the last hour. Oh, wow. Oh, that, 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 was, that was so boring. <laughs> it was just all... But, you know, that's what what you do in, in little radio stations. You do A lot that. programming. Yeah. 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 Program. So this, this is actually on TV, too. So this is on Channel 12, BBT. And Brad Jones does a great job. But it's on TV as well. So yeah. We're, it's, there, there's a camera right over there that you're on TV. So you look... <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm sure. He's used to that, yeah. I think. <laughs> I didn't want to scare you, you know, being on TV and radio both. But, uh, you know something, you, I mean, you was on that Dukes and Hazard thing here in Knoxville. Yeah. Yep. Remember that? I Brother do. was performing once you did. You sang song. Did I? Yeah, you, you remember the David, when we, last time you were here three years ago, we went over to David's, and you gave, David gave you a DVD of that copy. And had you on Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you was on it. Yeah. Yeah, Aren't that's right. Aren't you right. there and Luke? Yeah. Luke right, was, yeah. right. Yeah. And I did the bluegrass to kick it off, the portion, you know. And, yeah. How many thousands of people? That's one of the largest crowd they ever had at Homer Hamilton. It's, it's the first time they ever oversold it. They said yeah. the biggest crowd had ever been there. Is that right? Was yeah. Mary Costa and there? It, huh? Was Mary Costa there? Was she on I'm that sure part she of was, but they did a movie of it, CBS did, and y'all played it. played all over the country, they said. Mm -hmm. Y'all right. played it. That's where I got to, they gave me a copy of it. Over. What, from WBIR? Gave you a copy of it? I got a copy of it. Yeah. What'd they do? Just the, the, the cast came down? Yeah, you know, they, they had it. They filmed them starting out in Zerville with the law and uh, Mr. Townsend with Sheriff Townsend or somebody <laughs> was in on it. He was a part of the law and they, they locked uh, 
Coltrane, Roscoe P. Coltrane up in the squad car. He didn't know who he was. He was <laughs> it's all they shot. I mean, they took it, made a real good movie at it. And uh, then it went down to the night show for the big grand finale. Mm -hmm. And he was on it playing piano. I remember. Wow. See, I done done my part up in, we was in, the, when we come out on stage for the crowd. Yeah. We entertained the crowd with, uh, what's that guy? It was old Union uh, for a long time. Al Curtis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Al, Al Curtis. Curtis. He didn't see him see it. Did he? Yeah, the first yeah. version. Yeah, okay, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big. That's really good, wasn't it? Yeah. Had a good movie on it. Yeah. I bet over your career, Bill, you've got to do a lot of stuff like that. Go out and host things and be part of uh, all that. You ever have? What stands out? Anything uh, favorite that stands out you got to do that just impressed you, or you just had a great time doing? Oh, I'd have to, I'd have to think about that for a while. There's so many things. I uh, looking back over my career here in Knoxville, uh, I did about a hundred to a hundred and fifty what I call personal appearances a year. Oh, wow. I averaged about, about three a week. Oh, wow. And uh, that, you know, from from uh, a 10 member Lions Club to a thousand people somewhere else. So thinking about the things, I guess, yeah, I, uh, one of the most exciting things I did was, uh, I went to Washington. Wa went to Washington and covered the congressional hearings into the Jake Butcher uh, bank, uh, the bank failure. Oh wow! Yeah, that that was pretty cool. I was in Washington several times, but that I remember doing that especially and doing. Oh yeah, okay, yes. So I went up there, and this was 1982. Okay. Went up there and covered the he the hearing, and then I did a live report on via satellite back to Knoxville. It's the first live report done outside of Knoxville ever. Wow! And uh, so I did a live report on that. That was, that was a cool. big deal back in 1982 yeah. oh, to have huge. the satellite trucks and yeah. all that. That was yeah. a big that thing. That was huge. David knows about it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Jake Butcher, that's who he played for. Yeah. For, uh, yeah. 350 shows a year, campaigns for him, you know. Yeah. Like, Jake that's... told me just before he, the, that, that time he was getting sick, he said, you know, you played 95 counties one year for me. Is that right? Yeah. I've done 350 shows a year. Yeah. On both campaigns, each, yeah. each one of them. Jake was very instrumental in the 1982 World's Fair, wasn't he? Absolutely. He, he it would, <laughs> there would not have been a World's Fair without Jake Butcher. Yeah. There would not have been one. Uh, I know Jake messed up and he went to prison because he did, but I like Jake. Oh, yeah. Jake was a great guy. He sure was. Hey, he came back. We had him out here. Huh? Had him out here. Yeah, we, uh, we had him. Oh, he was out here a bunch. Years yeah, ago, right before he got yeah. sick. Yeah. Yeah. He'd come over and we'd go out and hunt property, you know, for his son Brad was in real estate. We'd go out and find property, but we'd drive around. I remember the first time he came over, uh, I thought he'd like antique cars because you get a lot of tension in them. You know, so I pulled out a roadster. You were bringing him up here. Yeah. Hey, when yeah, you, yeah, you were bringing him up. Did <laughs> yeah. I put him out that roadster. Of course, Jake had his white shirt on. He rolled his sleeves up, you know, a lot after that. <laughs> so we was backing out my driveway, and he said, David Earl, can I ask you something? I said, yeah. He said, does this car have air conditioning on? I said, oh, yeah. I just shoved the windshield out. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's it? And I said, yeah. And I just started driving. I thought he was cutting up. <laughs> and he called his wife, Sonia. He said, Sonia, I'm with David Earl. And he's got me in his real old time car, and he don't have air conditioner. She said, I can hear her say, she said, shut up and have some fun, David Earl. Jake, you're just too, <laughs> you just don't know how to have fun no more. <laughs> so, so we go out and ride all day long. <laughs> and everywhere he got out and went in, oh, I like your car. The car was getting all tension, see. <laughs> and uh, the next morning we had to go out, and I had a new Cadillac sitting there that I bought from Joe Holbrook. And he said, uh, David, can I ask you a question? I said, yes. He, he called me David Earl all the time. David Earl, can I ask you a question? He said, can we go on that Cadillac today? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted that. 
condition. Air condition. Air condition. Like antique parts <laughs> over there. That's so funny because she probably got to do you know, it has some fun, David Earl. They, there are a lot of different things you can have fun in. But he, but he liked it before the day was over because so many people at their look at it, oh, what model car is it? And this was real nice. It's slick, you know. Yeah. Show them car. <laughs> How many presidents did you get to meet? Have you met some of the presidents? Well, I, I think only, I actually met only two. I met Ronald Reagan and... Uh, uh, Seems like there was another one. My remember doesn't remember uh, as well as it, as well as it used, how, as it how used was to. Ronald Reagan, nice when you met him. Or yeah, 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 we yeah, went up there. Yeah. Um, you were asking me about special thing. That was a special yeah. thing. Oh, I bet. That was a special thing. Um, nine, again, this is nineteen. It's 1983. Okay. And there had been, uh, we were suffering, the whole country suffering an uh, uh, economic depression. We were, you know, it, it was a, you know, folks were, uh, they were out of, out of jobs, out of money, and it, it was tough. Mm hmm So, uh, we had done, we had done a, a, Channel 10 had done what we called a job -a -thon. You know, like a telethon, or what sure. we call a jobathon. We tried to put people together with jobs, mm -hmm. and uh, it it was successful. A lot of stations across the country were doing that. Well, the Ronald Reagan administration uh, uh, invited me and other and a couple others from the station, and uh, uh, people from the other stations had involved been involved in jobathons to the White House. Oh wow! So we went up to to the White House, and uh, we uh, were seated. There were about a hundred of us, I guess, from stations all over the country, and uh, we we were seated there in the each room of the White House, and uh, announced the person <laughs> came to the door and said, "Ladies and gentlemen, the president and vice president of the United States." Oh my God! <laughs> In walked Paul, uh, Ronald Reagan and and uh, Vice President Bush, and uh, they stood there and they addressed us for a while, and then they greeted us individually. And I have a nice, nice picture of me shaking hands with with the president. That's got to be so, pretty cool. Yeah, that that was about as cool as anything I guess so. I've ever done. That's two presidents there. <laughs> well, yeah, there you that's go. True. That's true. That's right. <laughs> two two yeah. birds and one stone. Yeah. There you go. You want, you want me to tell you who the uh, my wife thought was so cool that you've met? Who's that? So we're sitting there the other night at the party, and, and you know those pictures of all the people. Betty White. <laughs> <laughs> so that's tell, right. Tell, tell us about meeting Betty White. You know, I don't remember a whole lot about it. We we were doing um, we were doing a pre. We, we used to have these preview shows in the fall uh, or uh, late summer of, of the shows that were coming on mm -hmm. on the network, and we'd we'd do a, a whole big thing. We this was at the Tennessee Theater, and. Uh, Betty White, what was the show she Golden was on? Golden Girls. Golden Girls. Thank you very much. Yeah. Betty White was was there. We they always had a a star coming in, mm -hmm. and Betty White was there for that one. So um, I got got to be with her, and see, I, I got a great picture of Edie Ellis and oh, Betty nice. White and me. And there was oh, there was another time I'll never forget this. Um, it was at that. At, at 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 a country at the club out there on Dean Hill, I can't remember. It's country not from Dean Hill Country Club. Yeah, okay, that's what it was, yeah. Dean Hill Country yeah. Club, and that that was uh, that was our uh, our preview party at Dean Hill Country Club. Ad ad advertisers were invited, and you know all the people that Channel Ten thought was important or were important, so th they were there, and it was. Uh, it was uh, oh shoot, what's the name of that show? Well, Daisy Duke was on it. Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard. There you go. The Dukes of Hazard were there. <laughs> they were there. Did you get to hug Daisy? Let me tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have hugged her twice. I wouldn't have let go. <laughs> so they asked me. Uh, they asked me to play piano. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I played the piano and sing. So I did. I played the piano and sing. Uh, um, I, as a matter of fact, I remember what I sang. Couldn't what? remember the name of the show, but I remember what I sang. <laughs> I sang, sang for once in my life. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, and, I remember that. Do you? You remember that? You were, yeah, that was on the movie. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that. right. That's so right. Moved from Homer Hamilton to Daisy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Daisy Duke came up to me afterwards and said, oh, that was wonderful, and, and hugged me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't I, let go. I did not let go. You're a smart man. I hung on as long as I could. <laughs> You're a smart fella. I knew you was a good man. Smart. <laughs> didn't realize you were that, that's right. That's that, that's that video you yeah, were that's talking what you about. Said, I remember that song. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember? I remember because I, I think she was the first one to ever sing it. I took a lot of notice to. Yeah. Boy, I was good, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you, were. you still play. Very still impressive. Play. In fact, to that time, I didn't yeah. know you played piano. I have one big question for you. Yeah. Did you ever play on the Cass Walker show? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. But you sure did. <laughs> yeah. No, I still... Uh, I, uh, I still play the piano. I can't sing anymore. Uh, you know, I had, uh, you don't know, but I had cancer removed from my from my vocal cords, and that, that ruined my voice. I don't have my announcing voice, and I can't sing. I can sing four notes, and that's it. <laughs> Go, Ray, me. <laughs> ah, that's all I've got. Me and Howard's <laughs> taking note over. We can't do nothing. We can't do one. Nothing. That's four more hey, than hey, Barney. That's the best Barney said. I said, can you dance, Barney? said, yeah, no. Three steps, start, stumble, and fall. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, I do, I still play piano a lot. I play about every day uh, for my own enjoyment. And I'm taking violin lessons. I'm relearning how to play violin. I used to play it really well. Really? Yeah, when I was a teenager. My mother said, I said, no, Billy Jean, that's my name. Yeah, it's Billy Jean. <laughs> Billy Jean, you're going to be either a concert violinist or a preacher. <laughs> well, neither one worked out. <laughs> but I did. I, so I, I studied violin. She had me taking violin lessons. And I ran out of violin teachers in the little town where I grew up in Butler, Missouri. So I went and took the bus every Saturday down to Nevada, Missouri, where they had not a, Nevada, not Nevada, Nevada, Nevada. <laughs> where they had where we found a violin teacher. So anyway, I, I studied violin all the way up to through high school. I was pretty good. I was getting ready to say that. I was very good, yeah. as a matter of fact. Then, for some reason, I cannot remember why, uh, there was some kind of drama involved, and I laid the violin down and didn't pick it up again until about three or four years ago. Now, who are you taking lessons from? I am taking lessons. I'm taking violin lessons every week. Every Well, now I'm every two weeks. And... Uh, as a matter of fact, I played violin in church last Sunday. Did you really? Yeah, I did. With, with, with my violin teacher and and the and the uh, two violins and a cello and piano. And uh, who is who is your teacher, Bill? Her name her name is Betsy Castleberry. That's in in Knoxville, and she is wonderful. Now, see, I wonder, I was wondering if it's John Alvis because John I, teaches fiddle. He don't teach violin. Yeah, there's a difference. But, yeah. uh, you got something to play. Yeah, violin. Jacob, Jacob, he hasn't, he quit taking, but he he took for about two years. He hasn't taken in a while, yeah. but we want to get him started back. What, what is the difference between a violin and a fiddle? Oh, the way you play it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> That's the it. The instrument is the same thing. I've heard uh, other stories, but it's not terrible <laughs> right now. Surprise, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's you know, my violin teacher uh, I think it's very interesting she went to, went to high school with, with, with my son Michael oh wow and they were in a they were both in a, a, a show group there in, in Central High School Central High, in, in, in uh, where I live in Knoxville mm -hmm. um, called uh, the Bobcat Company oh wow uh -huh. yeah so she was yeah she and Michael were there together do you, your children do, do your children play music too? Uh, my daughter uh, Angelique was a very good pianist. Um, as a matter of fact, she almost majored in music in college, and then she decided not to. But she's kind of let it slip. I mean, she can play, sure, but she doesn't play regularly, so she she's kind of forgotten how. And uh, she's the only one. Well. Because I lost uh, both my sons yes. uh, 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 died, and Mark, my oldest son, was a fine musician. He played guitar. 
he could really play guitar and a, a great singer and 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 michael he died of aids mark did in 1990 1990 and then michael my youngest son uh was a great singer he didn't play any instruments i i, I had him take piano lessons and he was not real interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to do it when as you're well, not into it. As a matter it. of fact, um, my daughter was reminding me the other day, said, you know, uh, uh, Daddy, when it came time for Michael's piano lessons, he, he generally gets sick. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> so he did but he was a good, uh, very good singer. Was your family, your parents, your mom and dad, were they musical? Is that where it came from? Um well, they were musical, but uh, not, well, Mom played a little piano, not much. Mm -hmm. But my dad and I sang together in the church choir. He loved to sing. He was a ten when I was uh, 14, 15, I was singing sing the choir with, with him. Yeah. Singing tenor with him. And I kept getting older, and my voice kept getting lower, <laughs> and I had to move over to bass. And Dad wasn't happy about that because he couldn't read music, but I could. And he would just follow along with me uh -huh. you know, when we were singing. So he was not happy, but that's the way it had to be. When you play piano, do you play by reading music exclusively, yeah. or do you play by ear, too? I cannot play by ear. I wish I could. That's a real, real gift, but I, I can't do it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Don't feel bad. Me and Howard can't read, play by ear or music. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't play. Can't, neither one. Neither one. Right, okay. But we love to listen. <laughs> <laughs> We're big fans of yours and David. <laughs> oh, yes. That's right. So, Mr. Williams, what do you do to stay busy now? Obviously, you're busy taking piano le or t playing piano every day, taking violin lessons. Do you still, I mean, you do stuff like this, get to come up here with us, but do you still get out and do stuff in the community? Not near like I used to. Like I said, I used to do 150 personal appearances a year, but I, I you know, once in a while, I sure. do stuff like this. But I walk two miles a day. Mm -hmm. Um I, I prefer walking outside, but uh, if the weather's bad, I I can walk in, at church at the church to have a have a, a gymnasium and a walking track above the, the gym, so I can go over there. Yeah. Or my girlfriend can you believe that I'm not years old and I have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. good for you. <laughs> my girlfriend bought me a, a treadmill, so I've I've got that. When you can't get out there in the house, I, I can walk on too. That's so. fantastic. Remember, you know Randy Boyd, the, you know, yeah. you're the president of UT. He plays fiddle and yeah. violin too. We went over and played. And she's real good. Have you heard her play? Or I know. I she's, wow. oh, she's real good. And we played at Cherokee Country Club for a big, you know, a bunch of high dog mm. parties. <laughs> and, and Haslam was there. And, just so many big pieces yeah. over, but we were going to play for her. But she's really, really good fiddle player. And you talk about violinists and yeah. playing violin. She plays a lot of violin stuff. Really? And did her fiddle playing and your banjo playing go together pretty well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we played tunes that we knew together. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, he didn't want to fool with Misty, so I said, I'll just play it by myself. But <laughs> this one person sang, Jack Williams, you know Jack. Mm -hmm. Photographer here in Knoxville. No, I don't, don't know Jack. Jack. He's gonna be on here in about three weeks. Okay. And you got Jack Williams, Alan Williams, Bill Williams. Is any of y'all Ken? Carl. Yeah. 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 Carl. Carl. Now Alan swears up and down your Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I would disown Alan. Too. <laughs> he's coming Alan, out in a few weeks. Alan's gonna be here in a few weeks. Yeah, he got yeah. he got some. He was he was in a mess there when uh, October sixth, seventh happened. Yeah, he was over there. He was over in Israel was when all that happened. Alan was. Yeah. yeah. Got stuck over there for a while, didn't he? He did. He did. He's got a really interesting. He loves to share it. It's a part of his faith testimony now. But yeah, uh, Alan, let's don't talk about Alan. Let's talk about Alan. <laughs> Alan's boring. <laughs> we'll no, be bored with him in a few weeks. Okay, <laughs> it works. Uh, hey, does people? I mean, I know you don't get. It's not bugging you, but like you said, when you go walk like that. People leave you alone for the most part. They coming up and I mean, everybody wants to take a picture with Bill Williams. I know you. I know you're very humble, uh, but it's like David and other people. I, I realize the treasures we have. I really do, and I appreciate y'all. Well, thank you for and, that. But do they? I mean, I know you're very cordial to them. Like when we go eat here in just a little bit, uh, we'll probably get a back room or something. But uh, <laughs> we'll talk about uh, Emmett, one of your dear friends here, in just a minute. But. Uh, 
Do they leave you alone for the most part? They still they were, the, yeah, so. yeah, most people leave me alone, but that's all right. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have the attention. I know you are. <laughs> I, you know what? It's a, it's, it's one of those things when people uh, appreciate what you do or what you've did, and I, I've come to find over years when you're sitting behind a microphone or I believe behind a camera, I don't think you realize the impact that you have. I, you realize it really quick if you make a mistake. Exactly. <laughs> Boy, you realize it fast. Oh, that's exactly then. right. But yeah. you don't really realize, I don't think, uh, maybe some of the good that you do. And I'm sure over the years, golly, I've been thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people that you've impacted their life that you'll probably never, ever get the opportunity to, to see or for them to thank you. But I guarantee guarantee that you have. I, well, thank you. I grew I grew up, I watched you every day, yeah. you know. In fact, uh, we, I think I told you last time you were here, I, we, well, I bought the station in 1990. Uh, Jim Swinehart was running Channel 12. Yeah. Or Channel, yeah, Channel 10. Yeah. And I went out and met with him in 1990 and made a deal with him to simulcast the news on television. Nobody was doing that at the, at the time that I know of. And uh -huh. so we went out there and he made an agreement. So you were on you were on the radio station every day while you were there. Yeah, until, I remember that. Yeah, I, I had forgotten that. We I, were yeah, on. Yeah, I thought that was pretty exciting. It was neat. He yeah. was. Uh, he 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 said, "Yeah, that's fine." And so, in fact, till this very day, we still simulcast the morning WBIR news. We we start at uh, five in the morning and we simulcast Abby really? and the crew. Yeah, right up until about six thirty. We still do it. So we've been doing it for thirty four years. You still get your residual checks done. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every month. <laughs> <laughs> a little five dollar check in the mail. Sure, that comes in the mail. I know. Last time you were here, you talked about one of your biggest things and something that you're you were proud of is Monday's Child. Yeah. And uh, the does it, is that still being carried on in some way, shape, no. form, or fashion? No. When I quit, uh, it, it, nobody picked it up, and I I hate that they didn't. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's something that could be done by anybody. Sure. You know, but uh, they didn't pick it up. I I think I. So I retired from the station in 2000, came back in 2006 mm -hmm. and anchored for another year when when Ted Hall left. Yes. And but then I continued doing Monday Child and Mission of Hope and some other stuff. I think 2013 2014 was. I did I did Monday Child for for 30 years, and I okay. Anyway, in 2000, somewhere in there, I stopped doing Monday's Child. But we, we uh, I introduced 1,600 kids, got 1,000 of them adopted. That's amazing. So, uh, That's just amazing. And every once in a while, I, I was looking at it. After my birthday, there's a bunch of stuff on Facebook. You know, people that were there, whatever, remembered and made a lot of things. I really appreciate all that. But one of the comments and one of the things, I haven't read all the comments of one of the comments is, uh, was from a young lady, or I guess she's a young lady, a female, uh, said uh, that she had been a Monday's child, and uh, she thanked me for getting her adopted. But I anyway, was going to ask you that. Have if you if you ever had any of those uh, those not people very often awesome because you see the kids that were on Monday's Child had been in foster care or whatever. And that was a, a part of their life that they don't like. Yeah. They don't want to remember. And being on TV, being on Monday's Child was still kind of part of that life. Gotcha. Getting adopted, that's when their the new, new life. life began. Gotcha. And they kind of want to put the rest of it behind them, including being on TV. Gotcha. Yeah. You remember the couple that uh, I told you last time, I've told you this before, but I still have the letter. Me and my wife tried to adopt a uh, little boy's Jocko and Kobe, 1989. Oh, I remember that. Jocko and Kobe, and, and I still have the letter where we were uh, we were told we'd never have children. God blessed us with four, and we lost <laughs> one. We had to, we were pregnant five times, but I still have my letter of Jocko and Kobe. The grandparents sent it to us thanking us for reaching out and he they had been uh they got awarded to somebody but yeah that was monday's child we we were we were trying to adopt those jocko and kobe i'll never oh, forget I, maybe 30, i remember them they would probably be almost 40 years old i'd now. say they would be yeah yeah but that's, yeah that's something the impact you've made like that the, the monday's child like i was talking about the other one would be in the mission of hope we talked about before but uh, uh, we don't discount it it's still an ongoing yeah thing yeah it sure is and, and um 
Emmett that retired from there is going to have lunch with us here in just a little bit. And David's helped with Mission of Hope donating stuff. And I'm, I'm sure WSH, Merle FM has had parts in helping sure. with that as well. But rehash, tell again how that vision came about for Mission of Hope. Well, I, had, I, I was interested in, and fascinated and shocked by the amount of poverty that I found in the mountains. And I'm not really sure how I got to the mountains. Somebody must have said, Bill, there's you know, a lot of people starving to death up in the mountains, and I didn't believe it, so I wanted to see about it, and sure enough, that was right. And so I, I did a series, I did uh, several series of reports about that. But 19, uh, well, I can't remember the exact year, but I did a, uh, a, a one series of reports called Hunger for Hope. It was a three-part series. I ran on three evenings at 6 o'clock. And the focus of the story was, yes, they are hungry up there. And they need housing, and they need clothes and everything. But they, what they need more than anything else, what those poor folks up in the mountains need more than anything else, is hope. They need somehow to look ahead and say, maybe this is going to happen. I hope this is going to happen. Uh, and a, a woman named Julie Holland saw this series and said, I gotta do something. I've got to do something. She said, uh, she called me and said, is it really like that? Bill? Like, yeah, it's really like that, Julie. So she went up into the mountains and checked to make sure mm -hmm. that I was telling the truth. <laughs> and she found out it, it was like that. So she came back and said, I'm gonna do something. So she enlisted her friends and her church, uh, Central Baptist Bearden, and uh, Actually, well, that, that's a little bit later. And anyway, she put together some stuff. And in November, it was this 82? I think, I think it was uh, November of 82. She uh, went to the mountains with, uh, and, and to a, uh, a school up there and took clothes and food and stuff to 150 kids. Wow. And that was in November. In December, she'd really gotten in gear and got a whole bunch of people involved, including Central Baptist Bearden, right. Central Baptist Fountain City, and uh, First Baptist Concord. First Baptist Concord. And she went up to three schools and took stuff to 3,000 kids. No, oh. no, 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 1,500 kids. She went from 150 to 1500, and it just grew from there. Oh wow! Yeah, the, the next year, you know, it started in early, and I think the next year they did go to 3000, mm -hmm. but they just continued to grow. Well, well, Julie had some health issues, so she had to step aside. So Emmett Thompson stepped in as executive director in 198. Also, no, this no, this was uh, I wasn't 82. It was 87, I think. So Emmett Thompson came along about in 1889, uh, and what a job he has done. Mm -hmm. Emmett has, has grown Mission of Hope to the point it's now serving between 15 and 20,000 children every year, and it's giving scholarships and building building ramps and, and just a year-round ministry. The back to Ser school. Serve, yeah, back to school, serving the children and, and their parents in the, in the mountains of East Tennessee and Southeast Kentucky. Yeah. Let's not brag too much about Emmett. He's, he get the big head here. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> no, we love Emmett. Emmett's going to come over and eat with us. He's retired now. He, uh, what, he two just years retired. Ago, I think he retired two, two years, years ago, ago. yeah. But yeah, he's done a fantastic job. Yes. The impact. Here's the thing I always think about, like with what you started with just doing a little segment. Think about this, the impact. David's done this. And um, and Ron and, and uh, Howard, we just does vision or just doing something. When people sit back and does nothing, uh, how God blesses it by just doing yeah. it, starting it. Yeah. And just the vision, helping those people. Uh, what a blessing you've been to so many people doing that. I mean, well, think I about that. During all this 20, 30 year period, I continued to do stories up, up in the mountains. You know, I followed Emmett around, Emmett followed me around, whatever. And uh, so I, I continued to be, uh, 
help on, on my end of it to keep people aware of what was going on on Mission of Hope. Yeah. Well, WBR and yourself helped so much, and then that opened up. Uh, was it uh, Food City? Who was the one that first started doing the barrels? The blue barrels they started doing, and we still see those at Christmas time in the fall. The yeah. blue barrels where we collect toys. And, uh, and I know that people give money and different things. And those scholarships, those little preacher boys, I've took um, a bunch of suits. We have some churches that have, uh, uh, some of y'all that are listening may have been impacted by this, but some of those little preacher boys, we call them, they over there and they needed to have a, a yeah. sport coat or a suit. Or right. Something. So these people, when they pass away at these churches, a family or something, they don't know what to do with the clothes. Yeah. They would donate yeah. it. And uh, they have so many volunteers at Mission of Hope that helps with that. But they, you played a huge part of doing that. Yeah. Of course, it's grown to now by just the starting point. It, it, it is. It's it's done really well. Yeah. It yeah. You are talking about staying busy. And you do some, you're doing some segments, some uh Stuff still at WBR, they'll have something on there straight from the. You are straight from the heart, by the way. <laughs> right, you know that, right? I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm on very occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> they, they will call and say, Well, you want to do such and such, or will you do such and such? And I, I said, Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you come back out when the fires? Did you come out and help with that at all? With what? When the fires up there in Gatlinburg a few years ago. No. Did you come out and help? No. There was something, the uh, the telephones and things y'all used to do, and you you played a big part. Which one was that that y'all did? There was some kind of where people would call in. Yeah. Well, uh, they, oh, well, that, well yeah, I, even after I retired, Children's Hospital that telephone. Was, yeah, that yeah. was huge. Yeah. Yeah, we did that for years, and they finally gave that up about 2013. But we raised millions, millions of dollars for Children's Hospital yes. with those telethons. I'm very, very proud of that. Oh, yeah. 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 We had a lot of help there. Yeah. All, all the folks that you've worked with, you know, I, we talked about last time, those, you still stay in touch with them. Um, I know you have a group. What do y'all call it? That club, the the with Ken and uh, Daryl and those guys that get together and eat. Uh, well, uh, colleagues. <laughs> we call it the Boys Club. <laughs> we, but we very often, very often have a uh, a woman there. Yeah. We, we 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 do let them sneak in occasionally. That's smart. <laughs> it's a very irregular. We we meet every mm, whenever. Yeah. Six, eight weeks, two months, whatever. But I always I always enjoy that. We always have a very good time getting together, rehashing the old times, telling lies about it. <laughs> Tell them. Yeah. I would. I loved it if if somebody wanted to to call and ask you a question or greet. Oh wish yeah. You a happy birthday! If if uh, you don't care, if we can no, sure. we can do that. Let we the, let the open the phones up. In. If they'll open the phone lines up and let somebody, if they want to call in, a lot of people are probably embarrassed to talk to you. They're probably intimidated. Yeah. If anybody but, has a question or you'd like to call and wish uh, Mr. Williams happy birthday, just call and Jay put you on hold. And let me know. We'll put you on the air eight six five four five seven thirteen eighty, or toll free eight seven 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 eleven four zero. Zero five, uh, Mr. Williams. Over the years, what what's kept you know? You've always had a, a, a good demeanor about you. I, I don't think I've ever seen you, met you, seen you on television where I saw you that you were noticeably aggravated. You always seem to to be well kept, well put together, humble, and in good spirits. What keeps you there? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> now I do get aggravated. There are, there are times I, but I, I, I maybe try to uh, hide that. But I'm I, I don't get aggravated very often. Uh, I get aggravated with laziness. Yes. Uh, with someone not not doing their best that I'm working with. Yeah. You know that 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 would aggravate me. Yeah. But I've been so fortunate. The people I've worked with, for the most part, are ninety-five percent of them have just been top-notch. Sure. And uh, really fine. I don't know. Well, I, I'm, uh, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I try to practice that. The, all the principles involved in Christianity, and I'm far from perfect. I'm far from perfect. Forgiveness is a big part of Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. I ask for yeah. a lot. <laughs> so I, 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 that may help my demeanor. I, 
I don't know, but I, I'm lucky. I, I, I can I can stay pretty calm in most cases. Well, you 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 always are very pleasant to be around. Uh, you've had thank you uh, for that. Oh, you're welcome. We we enjoy. I enjoy having you. Enjoy, and I know I know people enjoy listening to you. But uh, it's it's just it's just good to have you up here and good to you know I, I like being around somebody that likes being here you know yeah, <laughs> the people that I enjoy, enjoy what they do that's so, great well good that's fantastic tell us, tell us just a little bit about walt martin you remember walt martin he, i do remember walt and i he, love walt he needs something else he he was a great guy yeah we yeah. miss walt he's great he started uh, i was doing bluegrass festivals and he really got into that, you know, and he would go with me on those trips on one end of his own. Yeah. And I remember one time, he had this big old Chevrolet car. We was playing in Z Virginia or Kentucky or somewhere up that way. He come out, I guess I'd just been around people like hired mechanics, and I know a little bit, and his car wouldn't start. It turned over good, but it wouldn't start. And I said, he said, it's trip is where you raise that little door up and turn them points. I said, if you ain't got a thing just points, but yeah, I got one in the back. And I turned it a little bit, and it started, and it ran perfect. <laughs> but I come home the next few days. I said, next day, I was on Cass Walker, you know, and I said, you take your car and get it fixed? He said, nobody's touching that car. You got the best it's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> and he could do some. He could write some good script, couldn't he? Yeah. He could write some good jokes and good good things in the TV, yeah. you know, his yeah. hours blowing back. And he, wrote a lot of good, he wrote a lot of really good things. David, was Ray Rose, did he work as a yeah. cameraman? Well, he's Channel 6. He was at Channel 6? Okay. All right. I just, yeah. yeah, Ray still plays bass for me occasionally. Yeah. But, but it, Walt was, I always thought Walt was kind of, you know, under, he just didn't get enough credit for what all he could I think do. you're exactly right. He had a lot of talent. Yeah, he? yeah, he did. Yeah, but he was he was very quiet. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he didn't push himself out he did not, That's it. He did not push himself he out knew it. He knew more than anybody could expect. Yeah, yeah. And so he knew he could do it, but he yeah. didn't want to say, I can do that. What did he do at Channel 10? I didn't, I don't, I don't, I didn't know. Well, him. He, he let his hair get real bushy and strangled out there, you know. <laughs> he wouldn't go with a lot of times. He wouldn't remember me. He'd go with a little was bit. Was he on the air? No, yeah. no, but no, but he'd do commercials and stuff. Oh, oh he wrote a lot of yeah, stuff. he 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 wrote, he wrote yeah. commercials. Oh, well, he he wrote yeah. a bunch of commercials. I forgot <laughs> what they had a title back then for. I don't, I don't remember what that was, but that's what he did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he wrote, wrote and produced commercials. Okay. I got something. If I can find it, I'll bring a copy. The Legend of Mad Jack. He wrote that. He wrote so many good things. <laughs> He came up that picture, Four Legends of Knoxville. Let's see, it was oh, yeah. David T. Thrasher, Cass Walker, uh, Mad Jack, and David West. He came up with that. <laughs> I'll tell you something he came up with. I've, I've used it all these years. He went back there one day when they got copy machines, and he took it. He ran a dollar bill. He put my picture on it. It <clears> all my advertisement. He made that card. <laughs> that, was that, that, that was his idea? That was his idea? made that up for me. I came back home to the artist, and he said, no, you can't use that. I said, that's real money. It's tampering. <laughs> so he goes in and gets one of them big bills out of a quarter machine he had. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. He took it off of that. He said, now, this is play money. We can use it, and it looked like the same thing. And so I got checked at the World's Fire. I was passing them out, and they got me for tampering with money. <laughs> Well, I said, no, I didn't, I didn't have the money. <clears throat> that guy said, well, it looks like money to me. I said, well, but it's not. Where did you get this bill? I said, I have a quarter machine. <laughs> I have a gumball machine. I tried, I, they went through it, they just let it go. They, they called me up. I mean, they were really hard. Because I was pacing them out the world's fair, maybe a hundred of them a day, and I was getting all sorts of business just coming out there through the day tree. <laughs> I, I said, I'm going to give you a little keepsake here. Everybody gets one of our dollar bills from our yeah. band, see? The band's on every corner in that. We've been there about a hundred of shows. We've done five shows a day. Yeah. And I mean, I had, it brought customers in. It's <clears throat> a good idea. You, you but, were, yeah. It was one of the most creative writers or people that you worked with, creative-wise. Steve Dean. Steve Dean. Well, by far. How's he stand out? He was just a, he, he he was uh, the head for for years of the promotions department. They have another name for it now. Uh, actually, he was 
he was a reporter when I first came to work there. And three weeks after I got there, they moved in into promotions, and he became he head of promotions. He he could write. Uh, he could produce. He had the greatest ideas. He he could he could visualize what he what he thought was the thing. Uh, well, he he just had this visualization that was just wonderful. Um, Steve is is one of the a member of the boys club, <laughs> and he's had some health issues, but he's doing better. But Steve, uh, uh, I, I I describe him as a as a genius. He uh, really he he was he was and is, you know, a creative genius. Yeah, yeah. How's the, what's the difference between the way and we I think we talked about it before, but in news now instead of just reading a scripted news thing, news reporting I guess versus just reading the news as being a, the anchor that position that you held for so many years what's the difference now from the way it was? Well, I've, got a lot more, I've got a lot more news now. <laughs> we had 6 and 11 back in my day. Yeah. And then they, well, they, were, then, uh, they did to expand, expand to no. live at 5, no. live at 5. Of course, I wasn't part of that, but they, it was a different, uh, a different set of people. Yeah. Um, and now we've got news starting at 4 in the afternoon. Well, it's not really news. It's 10 about town and, and then live at 5. And then the six o'clock news, and then they do the ten o'clock news on Fox, and the eleven o'clock news on Channel yeah. Ten. I feel sorry for poor Todd. Todd's doing weather about yeah. six straight hours. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's uh, well, that's it. There's so much more than there was. When when you you just missed uh, 9/11 when you retired yeah. in 2000, so. The 86 Challenger. What's some of the big, bigger stories that you had to help cover? What do you, can you remember? I know the, I'm trying to think in that time frame that you were here, or even before that. Well, again, back to the World's Fair. Yeah, yeah that was big. That was big because we had we had studios at the World's Fair. Oh, we right. the only local station that did that, and we were right there in in the midst of it all. And you know all the people coming. The, the president, President Reagan, Reagan came, came, and uh, just extra uh, big stars. They, they were all just coming in. It, that was. You need to get that. Is that Bob Kessler? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a that's a friend that worked in Channel Ten. <laughs> Years ago, and she, Marty Scott, is and she it? now no, it's Beth Blocksock. <laughs> she now lives in um, Houston. Beth, will you just hang the phone up? <laughs> hang it. <laughs> there you go. Um, I, I'm sure she's calling. Wish me happy birthday. I will call her back. Uh, Beth Beth Blockstock was. Uh, she worked in the newsroom. What did she do? I don't know, but she became a very good friend, and she she uh, got married and went to Houston. Anyway, we talked about the World's Fair and being on the, oh. the big stories. Uh, I was hoping you weren't going to say the Abraham Lincoln assassination, nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the shuttle. Do you remember the shuttle? Eighty six, January of eighty six, I think it was. Uh, I do not. Do you remember the weather? Well, the Challenger when the Challenger. Yeah. Well, okay. Exploded. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah. Yeah, what a, I mean, that was a huge story. I'm hoping you remember that one. I'm not sure. It wasn't that one. I did go to Cape Canaveral yeah. and cover the story when John Glenn went up for the second oh, time. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, I sure did. Wow. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah, it was. I, that was very cool. <laughs> so there's this big... Apparatus, big thing, big building, where where the shuttle shoots up from. I've forgotten what it's called. Apparatus. <laughs> that works. Big dang deal. <laughs> it's big dang deal. So 
I, I did my stand up. So, you know, with a, a stand up, you, you stand up and you talk to the camera. Sure. And uh, so I did my stand ups in, in front of this big thing down, down on the, the, the gravel path leading up to this big dang thing. <laughs> and Tom Brokaw was back up here <laughs> in a glass stand studio <laughs> doing his and, and it's a hot day <laughs> he, in air conditioner studio he's doing but he's got the same shot I've got <laughs> so I come back home and they say, wow, Bill, you and Tom Brokaw were in the same place, weren't you? <laughs> no, I was, the, I, I was in the gravel. He was in the air conditioning. <laughs> Did you ever get to meet some of those uh, anchors from yeah. the main affiliates? Whatever? Yeah, I went, uh, Edie and I went to New York uh, <laughs> one time and did uh, promotion shots with, with Tom Brokaw, with Charles Corral. Mm -hmm. No, that, that went by myself. When uh, Walter Cronkite was stepping aside and uh, uh, Dan Rather was taking over. Mm -hmm. This is back when we were still CBS before we went to NBC. Uh, Dan Rather was taking over. I went to New York and uh, interviewed uh, Dan Rather and Charles Corral. Wow. Oh, wow. Now, that let me tell you about Charles. I, I, I love it. Dan was just so friendly and a great guy. Was he? Yeah, and so was Charles Corral. But uh, so they had written this copy for uh, Charles and me to read, and uh, 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 you know I brought it along with me here. It is, uh, here's your part, from Charles. Here's mine, and he had the first half. And so he started out, "Hello, I'm Charles Carrolls, <laughs> and I'm here with Bill Williams." And he got through his 15 seconds and, and, and with about five seconds left for me to do mine. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, so, so slow, so slow and so, but I mean, it was beautiful. Yeah. You know, he had a great voice, but he took his time. He took his time. So, if you so we, we had to kind of edit him. I had, had to kind of cut that down. Who did you mentor after, as far as being a news uh, news anchor? Who did I mentor? Yeah, who who would you think you tried to? No, no, who did not? Who did you mentor? I, who did you idolize, or who did you try to model oh, after? Oh, Walter Cronkite. Walter absolutely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Did you, did you ever get to meet him? I did. Did you? I did. Uh, <laughs> just briefly, actually, I didn't. Uh, it was I was covering. I believe the Democratic National Convention in Atlanta, I believe. I'd been to New Orleans for the Republicans. They came back and were doing the one in Atlanta. And it was Thursday. They always end on Thursday. And, and we'd covered, you know, we've been there since Monday, going about 16, 18 hours a day. And so it's Thursday, the last dog had died they were they were, <laughs> they were all filing out and i was kind of standing out there waiting for my photographer or something and here came walter and i'm generally not this i'm generally uh not this forward but i saw walter and i was so tired mm. I, I i had no inhibitions i said hi walter <laughs> That's pretty cool. And he walked over <laughs> and said, and we we talked for a while. He was so gracious and so friendly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So he knew. He you. was as tired as I was. No, he didn't know who it was. <laughs> but, I mean, he knew you worked in news. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I probably told him, you know, who I was with or whatever. But, uh, you know, he came right over and I said, hey, <laughs> did you ever see. No, he's dead. They can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ever see somebody important you want to say hi to? Just say hi. Hey, Walter. Or, hey, Joe. Hey, Jim. Whatever. Well, I call, it works. I called Don Knotts Mr. Knotts when I first met him. <laughs> yeah, Barney. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was an idiot. <laughs> God bless you, Mr. Knotts, and I patted him on the back, and that's about all I could say to him. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. She uh, seems to be a great lady. Robin is a wonderful person yeah. and one of my best friends. That's how her friend had about your birthday. Because I was 
why didn't you vote your name up and wish you happy birthday? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she sure did. Beautiful lady. She is. She, she, is. Is. she is. She is. She's a joy to work with. And I've had some good co-anchors because I had Edie mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. a couple others, and then Robin. And uh, Edie and Robin were my two favorites. Uh, and, and they're just great people. And Robin is special, just absolutely special. You know, we talk when I go about that. Well, Martin, I got to tell you one more quick one on him. <laughs> I was about with him. Me and him and Mr. Walker, he was the reason that Mr. Walker done a lot of collecting one time on some stuff. We were just sitting there talking. He'd always come down while we were doing TV and drinking coffee and talking to me and Red and Fred and all those. And he walked up to Mr. Walker and we was talking to him about the gypsies that went in and robbed his stores, you know. It, it robbed him and they took, they just one of them jerks would dress up over her head and the rest of them went around the cash register and had 11 cash registers and drained them. And he, Mr. Walker got up and said, where are you people on Clinton Highway? You got to see Gypsy Land yesterday. He called it <laughs> Gypsy Land. And, but he couldn't collect because they fled out of the state of Tennessee, you see. And Walt was standing there, and Walt was just so smart. He was standing there, and Mr. Walker said, well, I said, did you ever get any of your money off those people that robbed your store? And he said, I can't. He said, they done got out of the state of Tennessee. He said, you know, I'm going to find them now. Walt said, I thought it was a federal case. He said, no, it was a state case because it, it robbed me in Tennessee here. He said, yeah, but Mr. Walker, didn't they take some uh, government checks, welfare checks, and Social Security checks and stuff? And look here, Mr. Walker turned straight to me and he said, now I'm going to get him and sit there if that's a federal case. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can allow it's a wall we're all three sitting there together. He told me, I'm going to get him when I, I I'm going to get out of here. That's federal. Paul <laughs> well, gave him the idea. I mean, Red, me and Fred used to give him ideas. <laughs> of what to say, sometimes we'd have to tell the same story for five, six days in a row. We'd, we'd get over and get on his mind. He told one of them things nine times in a row. <laughs> and Creed Daniels called in, and he said, uh, I'm going to have to, see, he's, I'm an attorney at law, so I've got a case here. I forget which story it was he told nine times. His cat, about the cats. It's a cat story. <laughs> and he said, this lady's suing because she took her TV to the, to the place he had worked on and said that every morning they told a story about some cats and said, said uh, he said, ain't nothing on your TV. He said, it's just some people on that TV station telling that same story every time. <laughs> and said, she tore out a warrant. You know, he made up some face, funny papers. Of course, Mr. Walker just laughed about them, but, but he came in there and, it, and uh, so he explained it. Oh, now that, 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 that Creed Daniels, I know him, but this is not no case, and I've been telling this. I've always wanted me to tell this story. You know, and he just dumped it all away. Go down. But it, it, uh, it looked like attorney at law. Someone sort of suing him, probably something they made up, you know. But it was funny. But Walt was going to give him that federal case, and he just turned straight to me and told me that what he was going to do. He should have been a detective. Yeah. 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 Hey, you, you, your love for music, uh, dead or alive, Anybody that uh, you would love to see, if you had one concert you could go to, who would it be? The New York Symphony Orchestra. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you ever go to see? No. No? No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're a lot different. I'd want to go see Leonard Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Shoot, I'd go see the Cass Walker Show. Yeah, the Cass Walker Show. <laughs> we had, uh, Russell was out here, just not been that long ago, Russell Bivens, and he was talking about things that happened on set that was hilarious, him getting tickled and having to run off the set and getting in trouble because he was laughing so hard he couldn't talk. Do you remember stuff like that where you guys would get just beside yourself tickled and have a hard time getting composed when the camera came back yes i'm trying to remember the details <laughs> <laughs> is it arable now yeah <laughs> we don't care there's the only the the case. everybody died it was yeah there you go <laughs> i missed a word 
I cannot remember what it was. 80 was with, was, what did I say? <laughs> oh, I, I can't tell the story. I, I, cannot, I can't remember the details. But uh, How'd you recover? Well, Edie, got, Edie was tickled. She was so tickled she couldn't she couldn't recover. I had to pick it up and follow up. You know, I, I, I said this word, and I, I think it's one that we can't say. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. I was trying to say something that turned out to be something else. not a nice word. <laughs> and Edie's going, <laughs> just crack it up, yeah. and she can't get followed. So I, I pulled it together and kept on reading. <laughs> <laughs> live live TV, live radio. That happens. Life happens, doesn't it? <laughs> He's about Russell. Russell. Now, Russell came over to actually do sports originally, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, was he coming over when, was that when Bob was leaving, or uh, was he just a weekend anchor? I don't remember. Yeah. But, I don't remember. Yeah. Well, he interned. He, I was talking to him. I was talking to somebody about him the other day that's wanting to get into sports, and I said, you know what? Call Russell because he interned. He came straight out of school, interned at ESPN, picked up a job there. He was at CNN. Was it CNN? Mm -hmm. I thought he, he was at CNN. He, that's right because he talked about CNN meeting oh, Ted yeah. Turner on the oh, on the yeah. escalator. But he came right out and went and interned at some of the at a big place and did real well. Picked up, went to work there, and then moved from Man, there to here when he, he got the job at Channel Ten. He worked with Van Earl Wright. We was telling him, yeah, I don't know if you remember the guy. His name, I just loved his name, but Van Earl Wright. They used to do the headline news at the ten at twenty after and at ten till the hour. And uh, Van Earl was one of the guys that Russell used to work with. Mm. When Russell first came here and was doing sports, but uh, yeah. Russell's a prankster. He's uh, oh, he is. Uh, Russell's a well, basically he's an idiot. <laughs> I talked to him just. That was Sammy, by the way, Russell. If you're too. listening, I'll tell him. No. <laughs> Russell's great. I, I've, I've had a lot of fun with Russell. Then, when I first got to to do anything with you all over at the station, it was 2006, and um, and uh, you were over there for some. Uh, you were, were you still there? That's when uh, well, you came I, back. I, I came came back. back. I came back. So I remember I was there when uh, John first came over. And okay, so that was like November, December 2006. Yeah, well, I first, I think it was February. Uh, it was when Don Knotts passed away. He okay. Had to come to the station. All right. And so, uh, so uh, Russell and Beth, they were always so great. And uh, I've yeah. told, uh, I told the story. Now I've never brought Beth out here yet, but I'm going to bring Beth out here sometime. And let her tell this story. But uh, I can't remember if you were in the studio and you and Robin was fixing to do the news at 6 and we were still doing live at 5 and uh, they had me behind a curtain. It's the first time I was going to be on there. And I don't even know if she knew who Barney was, but I was behind behind the curtain. And Beth was live on the air doing some segment and they gave me the cue in the ear to go. And so I just went out and started doing stuff and uh, blowed the whistle and I come out and Beth goes, Oh, <laughs> and, 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 oh, I told her about it. Yeah, I used to. I could get her good. Russell just dying laughing. Russell, he just, no, he just play along. Great guy. But, yeah, they they've been so good to Town Ten and all this all the station, but to coming to Siderville and doing stuff with David. Me and David's been over there together on that stuff. But they've always been so good to to let people like me that I don't have a platform, but they get to come in and y'all were so friendly, and you the leader of it being so cordial people tells me all the time bill williams robin russell and beth and todd howe that team i love john john's a great guy we love john but i'm gonna tell you that team i don't know that that's that's what you call the a team <laughs> and uh, and the people will tell me say are they really that nice and i just say yeah except for russell, <laughs> russell russell's kind of an idiot <laughs> Is there, is there a finer fellow around than Todd Howe? Uh, there is not. Yeah. Todd, yeah. Todd is what you see. Well, all of you are. Yeah. Is what you see. Yeah. Exactly. Now, wasn't it Russell said that either him or Todd, they threw him in the pool? What was he telling us oh, about? Oh, they were on a, they were doing a remote. And they dared him. Yeah, and uh, Russell went into the pool, and did he get Todd? They were doing a live shot. Yeah, they were doing a live. They, they either, were doing one of those remotes where they were on Friday. Yeah. And it was. I think it was live at five was doing it, but they had Todd up there as well on the remote. And these people had a pool. And um, I've they, seen that video. Yeah. Yeah. Russell, <laughs> yeah. So Russell went in. The Russell pool went in Todd. full clothes. Neither, yeah. And either they be Todd followed or either somebody pushed yeah. him. I don't, I don't remember I, I what think he said. Somebody pushed him. Yeah. I think, yeah. You know him better than I do. But do you think there's anything somebody could ask Russell to do that he wouldn't do? No. No. <laughs> 
he's, he's very kind, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He he's is, good, he's, he's a good guy. But, but that is truly the, the A team and the quality of people you all are. So <laughs> I brag you. on you way too much. Thank so you. Let's find some dirt on you. <laughs> you're, so you're taking violin lessons. Yeah. What else are What else do you do to keep yourself busy, occupied, and uh, just in general to enjoy yourself? Well, like I said, I walk, walk every day. Of course, I'm involved in church. Sure. Uh, uh, very, very involved in my church uh, every Sunday and other, otherwise too. Um, I, uh, well, I spend a lot of time with my cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I adopted my cat right after Wanda died. Wanda died uh, a little over four years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, Wanda, my wife, uh, yes. 37 years. Uh, anyway, I lost her to, uh, to cancer. But anyway, so I needed companionship. And uh, Angelique, my daughter, took me to, uh, to, to Young Williams and found me a cat <laughs> and his name is Cosmo and uh, we we spend a lot of quality time together every first thing I do the well, first thing we do when I get up in the morning I have a place where I go drink my coffee and my cat's in my lap <laughs> we have to have a morning conversation <laughs> and we you know kind of discuss things of what you know what we're going to do this day and uh, and whatever I told him all about coming out here this morning. <laughs> was did he approve? Well, I, he blinked a couple of times, so I think he liked that. Yeah. You like to fish? <laughs> I do. Oh, thank you. Yes, I uh, I love to fish. Um, as a matter of fact, a friend of mine has uh, suggested or uh, texted me yesterday. He found a new a new place to fish. I I don't get out on the on the lake like I used to. I sold my boats. Um, we used to live on the lake, and mm-hmm. that, oh, I loved that. Oh yeah. When Wanda and I bought a place down on on uh, Telico Lake, and we lived there for about ten, twelve years, and we 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 were. <laughs> but it take me a while. Um, but th- that was wonderful. I, I had I had a a pleasure boat and, and a fishing boat, a bass boat, and uh, all of that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Were, I fished every day. What's the biggest you ever caught? Seven and a half pound bass. Wow! That's wow! Biggest I've ever caught. But that, actually, that that was in Missouri. Oh wow! Yeah, that was in Missouri when I fished my dad. My dad taught me to fish, mm-hmm. and I loved to fish with my dad. He was an excellent fisherman. Now David's got a great place. You ought to go out to with David. He's got a great place to go fishing. Yeah, yeah. right there off the water. Really? Yeah. I'd love to see if nobody can see her. Somebody going by, they look over and they see David West and Bill Williams fishing. (laughs) (laughs) Boys are going to get bugged. Somebody knows you're back in there. See, I got to let him grow up around it. Mm -hmm. He can hide. He's got a little cabin there. Really? Yeah. Well, that sounds ideal. And it comes out. I built steps down to it and it starts zero to 25 feet deep or 30 or whatever it is after in the middle of the lake. Yeah. It just goes out. You can just walk out a step at a time and get wherever you want to, you know. <laughs> it's good. I caught a... I was trying to think what the biggest pounds I caught. I caught catfish. It was on the ground to my knee. Yeah. I measured it that way, but I forget how many inches it was. Similar, 18 inches or something. Yeah. Big, it's heavy. <clears throat> I've caught several pretty good size ones, but oh, they come up there and fish. I just not time to throw them back in. I don't want to put them. Oh yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't keep them. Anymore. Oh yeah. I'd... Last last year, I went to uh, Hilton Head with my with my daughter and, and her family and extended family. There were about ten or twelve of us. And we went fishing. I caught a fifty-pound shark. Oh wow! Yeah. I was just going to ask you if you've ever been deep sea fishing. Yeah. yeah. I enjoy that. I throw it back. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> we was up there on one of them piers. Been a few years ago at Myrtle Beach, and I've got the plaque and. You caught the biggest of, of the breed, right? That ever been caught? No, I caught the biggest that ever been caught yeah. there. Yeah, oh, biggest what? Papano. What's that? It's a. They say it's rare eating. It's real high dollar fish, but 
the biggest in history, they said at that time, was eight pound in Florida. And mine was up by that four. Is that right? It was the biggest that's been caught in that wow. area. In the Carolinas. Yeah. <laughs> I was just goofing around. <laughs> Eating ice cream, went up down the dock, and had bought shrimp, put it on there, and I jerked it. I saw it, and this guy said, hey, you got a fish? And he went over and took his net and helped me get it out. He said, I believe it's a record. And I thought, well, what's that? And he's a fisherman. It was fisherman for blood, you know, is that term. What'd you catch him on? I said, a shrimp? They don't eat shrimp. He still had his jaw. I said, well, he's got it. <laughs> well, they fried out me the whole rest of the day. <laughs> Outside that one guy was really, really. <laughs> you know, nobody ever, they've been fishing for years. Nobody ever caught. I got the black and I got a savings bond and it's still in the bank and I got a. Of course it is. <laughs> Save all kinds of hotel rooms. <laughs> I got a list of you won it. For catching the biggest fish. Huh? For, just because okay, of that I fish. <laughs> we don't want hot ice or cold. What did it look like? I don't know what I've never I heard. I ate model cars so we had good ice. What color what kind what the fish look like? It's a Are they dark? Yeah, kind of yellowish. No, they're more silver and yellow. I don't know I've ever heard of one. I've got well, the first fish I ever caught it there was a little one like that. Mm -hmm. But this was the record. It said for that year, it's on the plaque. I forgot what year it was. <laughs> there the you go. I mean, the record for the... Yeah, I've fish. seen the plaque. I've seen that plaque at your house. Being out there in Missouri, did you ever uh, did you ever get a chance to play in Branson, or are you familiar with Branson at all? I know it's a little bit south of Springfield. I never played in Branson. I went to Branson. Yeah. yeah. My dad and I used to, used to fish uh, Lake Tenicomo okay. there at, at Branson and fish for trout. Now they called it the lake, but it was a fast moving stream. Yeah. And uh, we, we used to fish that a lot. Yeah. yeah. I wondered that when go uh, Springfield. I went to. I was out there several times last summer. In Springfield, and just it's what about 40 yeah, miles or so south, something like that, yeah, yeah, of Branson. Uh, right. it's Branson. A lot of people don't realize that it's a place to kind of like Pigeon Forge, I it guess, is. where all the uh, shows right. and stuff, a lot of the, all the big time stars have played out there. They have, yeah. well, they got their theaters out there and stuff. They've, you know, that just I don't know if it just popped up overnight or if it's just a long time coming and we just heard about it, but it just seemed like. When they launched Branson, it just took off, you know. Do you well, I, re I remember my folks taking me to Branson when I was a kid, and exactly. that's been a long while ago. Was, was and it, it, it wasn't like it is now, oh. but it was still uh, a destination. A tourist destination? Yeah, okay. yeah exactly. Kind of like what Pigeon Forge was years yeah, ago. Yeah, was in the 60s exactly. And 70s. Yeah. yeah. The Dillards uh, from the Andy Griffith Show, the Darlings, uh -huh. and Rodney, uh, we've talked a lot about. He he lives in Branson now. Oh, really? They did shows out there for years, but they were from a little place called Salem, Missouri. Now, <laughs> how far is Salem from you? From my, you? Mother, my mother uh, lived about... 10, 15 miles okay. outside of Salem. Well, they call it the Ozarks, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, Salem would be from Branson, 150 miles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think we got a call here, Mr. Graham. Somebody uh, wanting to. Let's see who. <clears throat> Good morning. Welcome to Ask Your Neighbor. Do you have a question or comment for our guest this morning? Yeah, I was just wondering if uh, Sammy's been calling Russell Biven any names today. <laughs> Sammy? Well, let's see. Russell Biven is one of the finest young men I've ever known in my life. You recognize this voice? I do. I yeah. do. Yeah. No, I, I was, um, I'm sorry. I'm going to, uh, I'll probably repent and I'll see you at church Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Well, well, I just wanted to actually call in and say hello. Well, that's Russell. Talk to him. I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't really want to talk to that idiot. I mean, Russell. <laughs> hey, hey Russell, there? how you doing? Bill? Yeah. Uh, well, happy birthday again. We're, thank you. We celebrated thank this thing for like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's 93 and it's only been a week. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Russell. I, uh, I, I can't believe this is one of your birthday presents. <laughs> That's hey. why Sammy got him. <laughs> hey, so when are you going to come back out and do radio with us? Hey, uh, uh, sometime in the next three to five years. Yeah, that'd be great. Happy to. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you showing up. Uh, by the way, oh, uh, no. by the way, go ahead and mark your calendar. Second Tuesday of uh, September, I need you to call Bingo for some senior citizens. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> hey, you're the best, buddy. I was just kidding you. Hey, I, I, I'm glad you got Bill on there. 
Bill's one best great. human we're, beings we're, I've, I've ever uh, had the pleasure of knowing, that's for sure. And I, I love you guys, and I'm going to keep listening. Hey, Thank Russell. you, Russell. Hey, Russell. Love you, love Russell. you, Russell. All right. Do me a favor, Russell. Hey, hey Russell. I think he's gone, brother. He's listening, though. Hey, Russell, if you're still listening, hey, we're going to be eating here in a little bit. If you'll call me, I'll tell you where we're going. <laughs> I would love for you to come and eat with us. I got somebody to help pay for the lunch. Good morning. Welcome to Ask Your Neighbor. Do you have a question or comment for our guest today? Yeah, I do. Uh, Gold Rush Junction was up there in uh, Branch and also over in uh, where Dollywood's at now. Gold Rush Junction. Uh, okay. I read both of them. Are. That's what I ordered. Uh, Y'all know about that, don't right? I? But, yeah, I'm all talking about it there. I remember Bill and all them for years and everything okay. on the news and everything like that. And, uh, you know, and then Margie Ison back in, too, and all that. We used to watch her, too, every now and then. Yeah. But, but I just want to call let y'all know, you know, about Thank that. You. But, yeah, I just remember back where the Doris Church, you know, where Dollywood was called. That's what it's called. Dollywood. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Y'all have a good one now. You too. Good to see y'all live and everything. I'm old too, so I don't have any. Well, thank you. <laughs> he brought one day at a time, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, good luck. God bless. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. God bless. Uh, cool. He mentioned Margie Ison. We need to talk about her. Yes. What What a difference she made in my life. Mm. Uh, when I came here to Channel 10, uh, 47 years ago, 19, 1977, uh, we were number two in the market. Uh, then I didn't take over at 6 o'clock. I was 11 o'clock anchor for a year, and then they, they made me 6 and 11 in 1978. And, oh, I, oh, I was co-anchoring with, uh, oh, my, what was her name? Kim, Kim Stevens. Was it Kim? No, Kim, no. Kim Simmons. Or, uh, no, 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 no. Somebody else. Clankin with another pretty little girl. I'll think of her name in a minute. But uh, we made a, we did a, we gained a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in November. With the, the major uh, ratings books back then, I don't know what they do now, came out in May, November, and February. Mm-hmm. So in November we had we had gained a couple of points, not nothing very significant. So we're getting ready for the February February break. Well, we think this this is going to be great. You know, this this is going to be great. We we're doing great. It snowed <laughs> <laughs> and snowed <laughs> and snowed, and everybody switched over to Channel Six to see what Margie had to say about the snow. <laughs> Came out with the worst ratings ever <laughs> in Channel 10 history, the worst ever, and I was I was sick. <laughs> I was just oh this this was terrible. I was I was ready to go. I had been I was offered a job in Huntington, West Virginia. Yeah. I, I was packing my bags. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you was going? Going pack. I was packing my bags. Uh, they they offered me the un thinkable amount of twenty five thousand dollars a year <laughs> to come up there and 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 uh, co anchor with uh, and I was ready to go. Well, our news director at the time, the name Bob Sellen, who became and is uh, one of my dearest friends, said, "Bill, uh, stay with me." Well, please stay with me. It's going to be okay. So I can't give you twenty-five. But I'll raise your salary to nineteen thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I, he, he said it's going to be okay. Please just stay with me. This is in April. Yeah. Uh, last weekend in April, here came Margie. <laughs> they brought Margie over. Yeah, we brought Margie. Margie said it would. <laughs> they brought Margie over. They paid her enough money. I found out later they paid her a lot more money than they were paying me. <laughs> but that's all right. She was worth it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have thought so at the time. But, I, <laughs> but they brought her over. This was in April. The May book came out. We pulled about Ever. Uh-huh. Ever. Yeah. The February, and then we, we, we went for the next few months. November book came out. We had a... 46 percent share and channel six had a 30 percent share wow. 
thanks to Margie. Wow. Never looked back from there either. Never looked back. Yeah. We maintained that. Yes. Uh, uh, throughout my career, anyway. But yeah, Margie made a difference. Absolutely. Margie's uh, having some health issues now. Um, her husband, you may or may not know, died last mm -hmm. fall, yeah. November, something like that. We lost Jim. Uh, and uh, so, so Margie's having a little difficulty now, but I talked to her occasionally, and her voice, she sounds just as per per perky as she ever did. And she's 80. She's five years younger than me, so she's 85, wow. 84, 85, something like that. But she's... Uh, uh, she's a wonderful, beautiful woman. I love Margie. Good morning. Welcome to Ask Your Neighbor. Do you have a question or comment for our guest this morning? Are you there? Good morning. Ask Your Neighbor. Do you have a question or comment for our guest this morning? Yes, sir. Uh, I want to say that uh, just like Jay and uh, Mr. Farmer, if we had more people like Mr. Williams in the world, it'd be a whole lot better place. Oh, thank and you I so guess much. I better slip uh, Mr. West in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to say that. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that very much. Bye-bye. It's a good statement. Yeah, that is nice. That's a nice statement. Yeah, Marty used to go, uh, I think I'm to the Museum of Appalachian every year to follow Passport. Did she? And uh, she always sang behind David's Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure did. She I did forgot about that. Her. Beautiful lady. Yeah. When I first met her, she lived over here in Claxton. Yeah. And I, I was out of school bus. I just got I went up out of school bus. And she was real young too. We were both young. And that's where I met her. She'd come out there and talk to him in the school bus. Why you driving? Hour. Is kids that right? Yeah. Hour. She used to say, David, I all my kids to school. She'd known me for better since she'd been here. Yeah. Yeah, she lived there for a long time. Good morning. Welcome to Ask Your Neighbor. Do you have a comment or question for our guest today? Yes, sir. I've uh, listened to Bill Wu for 30 years, watched his work, all the things he's done. And I always think he was a godly man, and I believe he is. And uh, uh, if we had more lights in the old world, it would be a better place, wouldn't it? Sure would. But uh, I want to say one more thing. All right. Uh, I hate to have to be up there with uh, those three nuts, but I'm going to say when I was too good, he was always passing. <laughs> <laughs> have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, right, he, right. he said he, he, he ain't you had to be here with those three nuts, but... <laughs> He said where there's he good, said there's got to be friends. evil. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I know who that was. Uh -huh. We're going to scold him. Oh, you that. take no. care of that there, Barney. <laughs> no. see, see, he said you three nuts. He no. left me out. No, he didn't know me and Howard was over here. Okay. Jasper's in studio. Oh, Jasper's in the studio. Jasper, me and Howard's clean. We're, sur <laughs> no. We're surrounded. No. Mr. Williams, it's, been, it's, it's always great. I wish you'd come back. I'd like to have you every day if you could. <laughs> well, uh, why don't we plan about three years from now? <laughs> we'll do that. Yeah, it's a date. Uh, what's that salary now? <laughs> Nineteen thousand. <000. laughs> uh, when we when we get to finish here in just a minute, can you, you remember what your closing remarks would be at the end of the close of the broadcast each time? What would you say at the close? Uh, I, it's no big deal. I just well, said I just yeah. I'll I'll be glad to. Yeah, let's say when we okay. get ready to close. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> now the other day when we were at your party, they were showing the video of you walking off down the hallway. Yeah. How how. Uh, I don't know if that was the actual one or you had to do it two or three that, times. That was the actual one. But you one. had your papers in your hand. Yeah. So you had your... That's what I did did every every night. I walked down that hallway with those papers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was sad. Yeah. To me. I don't know, man. Yeah. But, but then you came back, so... <laughs> <laughs> it was like you know, Rocky, I, think, one, I, two, three, I think that was ac the actual last... Yeah. Last newscast that I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty moving. It's pretty moving. Yeah. I remember uh, as Walter Cronkite. They always had these sign-offs or the way that, and that's the way that mm -hmm. Walter yeah. Cronkite. And uh, so they always had these si signature sign-offs. But um, when we get ready to leave here in just a minute, we'll do that. Okay. But, uh, Good deal. I, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we enjoy it. Thank you. We enjoy it. Thank I know you, our David. listeners. 
Our Thank listeners enjoy it very much. One of my favorites. Yeah. Just tell them about Wild Wings. I guess. Won't you tell them about Wild Wings? What's the date on it? April 8th. <laughs> April 8th. April 8th. Okay. Wild Wings on uh, Emmy Road. Okay. We got one of the hottest bands in town. We had that boy that was on American. America's Island. Idol. He was over there last time. Yeah, Noah Peters, y'all. Brought the house down, didn't he? He did. He done, yeah, he done the... Uh, National anthem at the Bristol race two Bristol weeks, races, two Sundays yeah. ago. He sang the national oh, I anthem. I didn't know that. Got a yeah. bunch of stuff coming that, up. So we'll the party was at the week. store. It's a, yeah. It came up from Sunday or Saturday. They come see me sometime this week, <laughs> I guess. From this. I don't know what week is. It's either Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. One of those he, days. He's got a good chance to win that America's Island. Is that on Channel 10? It's ABC, though. I don't know. He'll probably, he'll probably be done be somewhere before that comes off. He'll, uh, he's, he, he's, he's got, got some big deals yeah, going. He's, he's doing some big time stuff. So. Yeah. Better, better hug, and, hug and shake and hide it with him while you can because you'll be paying for his it. His brother come got a Martin uh, nice four or five days. Yeah. Stayed a long time with us. But, yeah. uh, they will have to bring it. Well, they sure are good. But Wild Wings, of course, we got we got a good band. We got Danny Hutchins with Charlie Pride. Before How's Danny years. doing? He good? good, real good. And we got Ken Bonham at Red Servine, and also he's on the Marshall Andy show now. Okay. And uh, Rick Campbell, he works with just about everybody around. How's Mike doing? Mike is had to have his leg taken off, but he's doing pretty good. Had pretty good spirits. We went for a Thursday, wasn't it? You was going up there. I seen the note from Karen that yeah, you was going we up there. Went for a Thursday, and talking his leg. And Aaron and uh, Mike West, and it seemed like he was doing pretty good. And they told him he'd be back up playing again for a long. So there you go. Looks good for him, but. We got uh, Chicken Man, which is Jerry Isaac from America's Most Funny People. One yeah. hit, and let's see, I don't forget nobody. Rick Campbell worked with Bill Monroe, of course. Me and his works about all the bluegrass chains. Bill Monroe, and I worked with Bill Wild and Carl Story and Cas Walker and Bonnie and that Bonnie and Buster. That's when I woke up. <laughs> but anyhow, <yeah. laughs> we got uh, we got some girls that can really sing too. Okay. We got. We got Crystal Gale and Tara <laughs> Loretta and Mandy Bridges. Boy, I mean, we got a show and a half. You guys go for a couple. What, what do you do? Play an hour and take a break? Play an hour? Yeah. Okay. Take an hour and take a break. We play two, two 45 minute shows. So I play about 45 minutes. Wild Wings and Pal. And yeah. that's. If I run over, if I go into an hour, then I cut the second one short. They let me do anything I want to do. <laughs> they give it to me. I take it a year at a time. And. and uh, they said, do whatever you want to do. You're the most professional band we've had in here, but I don't know about that, but we do have fun. Well, you, keep, try you keep them full. Yeah, I'm going to try and come. You going to play drum for us? I will. I will, I will. If April you don't 8th, do that, I'll find I want out. Barney to take his jail. <laughs> 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 Remember now, we got some Martins. We're running a big deal on Martins right now. I'm helping Doug with Martins because we got several of them down there. Okay. Uh, Southville Music's going strong, and we got all kinds of strings, peeps, guitars, drums, banjos. We got, they only made a few David West models, and he's got one in on trade dinner, or something else going to look at. Okay. And uh, they were made by Tennessee Crafters, which went to Carbide and made that big, expensive tone ring. Yeah. And we've got uh, a lot of guitar stuff on sale right now. A lot of things happening. If you need a show, give us a call, because we got. We got some coming up, you know, some most of the parties and things, but and yeah, we've had a good time. We're so happy to have Bill with us yeah. today. Amen. Amen. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Anything you'd like sure. folks to know? Anything we haven't asked or just something you, you want to share? One, you have one calling there, Ron. Uh, I believe I do. Thank you, Sammy. Good morning. Welcome to Ask Your Neighbor. Do you have a question or comment for our guest this morning? Yes, I do. Uh, I called back there because I want to tell Bill uh, Williams there that he's uh, Talking about Margie Ice and got, you know, better ratings or something like that back then. You know, he, he put a mini skirt on, it might be a, <laughs> a better hot rating. <laughs> I'm not sure or not, but there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank right. you. Bye bye. Yeah, I don't know about that, but there you go. <laughs> All right. Anything else, guys? I think we're good. Well, I just want to thank you for oh. for hosting and for having me in. And uh, this it's been kind of a long, drawn out 90th birthday celebration, and that's, this is part of it. And I appreciate what everybody has done and all the greetings and 
and uh, just everything. So thank you so very much. Oh, you're welcome. We're, you're welcome anytime. Thank anytime you can cut loose in a few minutes and want to come over and howdy and shake with us, we we appreciate it. All right. Thank, thank you, Sammy. Thank you. Thank you, thank David. You. All right. All right. He takes off the air here. Yep. What's the sign off? Sign off. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to everybody for for listening. Thank you for listening, and have a good day. There it is. Thank you for listening to AM 1380 WYSH. And ask your neighbor. Make sure you tune in at 10 a.m. each day, Monday through Friday, right here on AM 1380 WYSH and BBB TV 12. Or listen live online at WYSHradio.com. And remember, if you have a question, comment, or problem, call in tomorrow and ask your neighbor. Or email from our website. It's Ask Your Neighbor. Thanks.